Hey there, greetings everyone. I'm back. Yes, I know, it's been a minute since you've seen me, and I've frankly missed every last one of you. It's uh, It's been hard to be away from this, and you're like, where the heck have you been, Lowry? I will smash your head with a rock if you do not start making more content. And I get it. I get it. I, I, I it was my bad. I've been moving. I've moved from one house to another. You know, a move can be a lot of work and kind of disrupted me uh, from being able to do this because the studio was all in boxes. That makes it hard to film. I mean, I guess I could have used the webcam, but that doesn't give you the quality that you're looking for, right? Yeah, well, whatever. You know, plus I've been like mega busy. I also have three kids uh, to take care of, and they, they take a lot of your time. Work as well. I do this on the side for fun. For you good folks out there and, um, uh, you know, uh, I had a lot of stuff, a lot of irons in the fire and this one just kind of got to the back burner, but I am back and I thought what better way to come back than to tackle one of the most common things I get asked about, which is going to be all about certifications. What certification do you recommend, Daniel? I want to get into security, specifically something to do with pen testing or ethical hacking, vulnerability assessment, maybe red team stuff. Like, where should I go? Where should I begin? That's a great question. I absolutely have my thoughts and opinions on this. And there's some weird minutia that kind of goes along with uh, that stuff. So I thought, you know what, we'll take, let's take the top three that I can think of. The three that always come to my mind when I say, you know, best intro certification. Or if someone asks me, I, I want to take something, I want to get into the hacking, what cert should I go for? Is it CEH, Pentest Plus, EJPT? What? What do you think? Well, I've recently had the opportunity, I say recently, in the last few, like half the year, honestly, I got to create content and go through CEH. I actually filmed a CEH course for version 11. I also did version 10 prior to that. I was involved in version 9 prior to that for my organization. And now I'm currently working my way through Pentest Plus, almost finished with that. I've also gone through and taken the EJPT from eLearn Security, which is INE. and um, So I can speak to those three pretty handily, and I think. And I think those are probably the first three that someone's going to think about off the top of their head. There are others out there, and we'll mention that as we go. But... Uh, I figure we tackle these three and see what information we can understand about that and try to make that right decision for us. Because at the end of the day, it is subjective, right? What's valuable to you and what you're looking for may be different than what I like or what, what I think is the best. So just take my, this is my humble opinion, take it with a grain of salt. I'm going to try to lead you and give you the information you need to make the informed decision on which cert you think would be right for you. So that's what it's all about today. So that said, let's jump in. Let's get that computer screen over here. There it is. And you'll notice I've started this lovely effort with Pentest Plus because I'm currently in the middle of, I say in the middle, I've, I've got probably, I don't know, 12, 15 episodes to go of, uh, of this, working my way through it. And I must say, initial impressions. I really like it. i got to be honest with you. There's some things I don't like about it, but for what it is, it's actually pretty good. I, I like it pretty good. So what do I mean by that? What do I like about it? Well, let's kind of go through some of these uh, bells and whistles here. Uh, CompTIA Pen Test Plus is the most comprehensive exam covering all penetration testing stages. I actually would say that that is a bit true. I don't know if it's the most comprehensive exam. That seems a bit markety, but uh, it's pretty comprehensive. It does cover from soup to nuts, right? Scoping and client engagement to actually performing the pen test and the hacking that you need to do to be you know, successful at that. And then post engagement uh, scenarios where you're doing cleanup, lessons learned, you know, um, delivering a report and talking about the report, what's delivered in there. There's all that stuff is covered in this exam. So that's, that's where I'm like, yeah, that, that's stuff I like because that is realistic. So I, th I think they did a good job here from CompTIA of saying, hey, it's not just hacking stuff. It is also paperwork and make sure you have contacts and you understand all the different forms and, and things that you have to go through. That's administrative. It's not just you getting to hack at stuff. Right? They, they do cover those things. They might not cover them com as most comprehensively as they, ex as they claim to here, but they do cover them. 
And um, of course, I, I create my own content for this. I'm not doing, I'm not following their stuff. I'm just following their exam objectives and everything. So let's see here. Uh, anything else that's interesting? Yeah, they're covering and testing the latest techniques against expanded attack surfaces, getting into cloud, hybrid environments, web applications, Internet of Things, and traditional on-prem. That is that is true. All right. Um, it has been launched. This is a little... Uh, it says it will launch. Well, guess what? October 28th is coming, God. You can take that off uh, and say it has launched. But, you know, these are the kind of things that just get left by the standby. But what's also interesting about this, there we go. This is the skills you'll learn, planning and scoping, information gathering and vulnerability scanning, attacks and exploits, reporting and communication, and tools and code analysis. Yeah, it does get into all these, and it does it in a in a fairly comprehensive way. Well, I won't go as far as to say most comprehensive because I know of other certifications out there, but it's pretty comprehensive. It does a good job. It gives you an idea of the jobs that you can kind of look at for penetration tester, a security consultant, cloud pen tester, web app pen tester, cloud security specialist, network security specialist. Um, that's a fair assessment, I would say. Anything else here? So this is a traditional exam. You're going to, you know, answer A, B, C, D. They do also have what they call performance based. I don't know if you can, performance based. <laughs> That's fun. Uh, questions where you kind of like dragging and dropping things in the right order or uh, what else do they do? Uh, performance base is, is a bit odd terminology, but yeah, it, it's not like you're going to sit down and hack anything per se. Okay. Let's just make that clear. You do need to know about the tools and techniques that you use to hack things so that you can create, you know, perform the right answer or put things in the right order or, you know, when you see the right hack, you 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 get the right answer, right? So you do need that. But here's what I like. $370 US. And right, so there you go. That's a, that is reasonable. I like to use that word. It's reasonable. Pretty cool. So in this, you're going to cover all sorts of stuff. I'm just kind of looking at my notes over here. Um, planning and scoping. So you're going to, like I said, I've kind of gone over other things. You're going to do things like a denial of service attack. You're going to learn some network-based attacks and, and scans. Uh, traditional things like password attacks, cracking passwords and how you do that. Other things like SQL injection, cross-site scripting, uh, session, e API, um, even some social engineering and... Um, other things like that. But I, I do find that they also really do a pretty decent job of getting you into the administrative side. So uh, for me, I give this exam a pretty decent mark. Now, things I don't like about it is it's a traditional exam. Yeah, a, B, C, and D, right? Multiple choice, performance-based, whatever the heck you want to define that as. And yeah, there you go. I would really like to see all exams go to per, like a real practical exam for at least as whenever they can let me put it that i'll give them some leeway honestly <laughs> i'd love to see every exam just become if you can figure out how to do this then you win that's just my opinion one guys i could be wrong but man it just like as someone who's worked in real life and and has also done you know training for people to prepare for certifications and also try to prepare you for real life and how that's going to look uh, in real life. Somebody calls you on the phone or you get an engaged. If you're going to do pen testing and they don't, they're not going to be like, well, did you, did you do this? And did you do that? Can you answer these questions? A, B, C, or D? That's not how it works. You get in there and you start like going, mm, I've got a, I've got an issue. What do you do? You run to Google, right? And you start Googling things and you start figuring stuff out. So that's real life. And, um, yeah, that is, I, I would like to see exams just kind of become open Google. And if you can figure it out, then you win. If you can't, then there you go. You try again later. That's me. All right. So that's pen test plus. I really like pen test plus. I think it's a good exam. I wish it was an actual practical exam, but it's not. All right. Let's see here. Let's go to EC dash council. Yes, it is that time certified ethical hacker. All right, 
So here's the thing about Certified Ethical Hacker. Their website is so, or just EC Council in general, their website is so difficult to figure out where stuff is that I know there's an area around here that talks about like signing up for the exam and maybe you just have to kind of Google that. Let's, let's, let's go back to Google real quick. Right, this is real world. Google, um, sign up for CEHV 11. Where is, where is that hiding? Always oh, hiding. Look, there's me. Um, let's see here. EC Council Pearson View. Maybe it's, maybe this is where I gotta go. Maybe it's in Pearson View. Yes, COVID related stuff. EC Council testing. Because I definitely want to get into this scheduling. Please contact EC Council for this number. What is this? In order to schedule and pay for your EC Council exam, you must have an eligibility number. Is this in there? Exam. Aha! I found it. You'll notice I didn't find it easily, but here it is. So we'll come back to this. Let's go back to actual programs, which, right, or where are you hiding? Looking for, there it is, CEH, Certified Ethical Hacker. Clicky, clicky, and we're moving along. Hi, yeah, welcome. Here we go. So the ultimate ethical hacking certification. Certified Ethical Hacker V11 will teach you the latest commercial-grade hacking tools, techniques, and methodologies used by hackers and information security professionals to lawfully hack an organization. And this is really kind of selling you on their training, which, cool, good for them. You know, sell your training. That's nothing wrong with that. Um, you don't have to take the training, that their official CE, uh, EC Council training, to take the exam. Uh, it does cover a lot of the things that we talked about before, right? Brute force, uh, like dictionary attacks or just password attacks in general, network sniffing, like SQL injections, cross-site scripting, command injections, uh, local remote. I think all this same stuff is covered in um, Pentest Plus. So very similar when it comes to the hacking portion of that. But what I don't see in CEH is anything about engagements, scoping, paperwork, statement of works, you know, with SALs and MOUs and uh, pen test reports and things of that nature. It does talk a bit about vulnerability assessments and creating and like reports for that, but not like in, super in depth, at least not from what I saw. All right, so let's see here. Now, you know, this kind of got, throws you a little more talking about modern malware analysis. Um, and now this is from their official training, right? So if you want to take their official training, you are going to come off the wallet just a little bit. This is a little more where I want to go. You'll notice again about the exam. The exam is 125 questions, four hours, multiple choice. There it is. It's another. So, so far we are comparing apples to apples here as far as the exam goes. Now what's interesting, I can roll now to get plans and pricings, but it, it takes you to a forum and you don't get that stuff. If let's just jump over to here really quickly. And if we look at this, oh man, a shivitz. So does it, uh, okay, that's option one. Let's look at option two. Exam without the training, okay? So if you don't take the official training, you got to come here. And this says, in order to be considered for the EC Council exam without attending training, candidates must first be uh, be approved via the eligibility process. Now, you don't have that problem with CompTIA. They don't have an eligibility process. If you want to take the exam, they're more than happy to take your money and let you try the exam. And it's 370 bucks that we saw. Yeah. And the application can be found here. So you got to felt that for EC Council, you got to fill out this application. What's cool about that, when I say cool, I mean that facetiously, is that is a non-refundable $100 fee. I don't know if we can kind of bump this stuff up here and I'll, I'll scroll. Whoa, there we go. So you see that they're kind of requiring this two years experience. They have this non-refundable eligibility application fee. So whether you're eligible or not in their eyes means they're keeping a hundo, whether you like it or not. Right, you got to fill out that form. And then here's the exam voucher price. Pearson View voucher. Whew. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. It says $1,199 US. If you go through ECC, the exam voucher is 950 bucks. So there's that. Okay. 
that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. Okay. So yeah, you can go to these places to get those vouchers. Man, oh man, here's the eligibility, eligibility, eligibility. I'm so crazy. <laughs> eligibility process. Hold a CEH certification of one, versions one to seven, so you can have a previous version of CEH, and that would count towards your eligibility. Uh, if you do not attend training, you must have a minimum of two years work experience in infosec, and you will need to pay that here. Applicants who are instructors, trainers, and PhDs shall also be eligible if they meet the above criteria. Uh, applicants who have attended official EC Council training, all ca uh, candidates are required to pay the $100 application fee. However, your training fee shall include this fee. So if you take official training, which I think was 850 bucks, which we saw before, kind of includes these things. So it's, it's kind of geared toward them wanting you to take their training. And that's fine. If you want to take their training, you save a little bit of money. Not a, not a butt ton, but you save a bit, you know, money's just as good in your pocket as it is theirs. So definitely go with the, the cheapest route for yourself um, or the most uh, economically viable. I'll put it that way. Uh, yeah. So you'll see a lot of this age requirements and policy concerning minors. Important notes. If the application is approved, applicants are required to purchase an exam voucher directly from EC Council through the web store. Candidates who versus vouchers, uh, whose voucher code does not match details, so on and so forth. Now, okay, so we're looking at like two different exams, right? Just kind of want to bring you in here real quick. Yeah, two different exams, both paper exams, right? It's multiple choice, one's got some performance base, whatever. Still basically kind of the same kind of thing, at least in my opinion. Now, um, money's a bit different, obviously. What's interesting about this to me was I was kind of surfing around on the EC Council site. I'm going to go back here and I found where well, I think it was at the bottom of the page. I'm going to scroll all the way down. I'm going to, I'll get you there. Don't worry. I'll bring you into the hello McFly. There we go. So let me, get, let me bring you back in here. I just scrolled to the bottom of the ethical hacker page and there at the bottom of the screen is a site map. And I was bouncing around the old site map. I found this page that said CEH, where is it at? Here we go. Versus pen test. I said, oh, well, what does that mean? Click on that. And it's CEH versus pen test plus. Huh. Well, we are talking about that right now. Isn't that a convenient thing? Ethical hacking and penetration testing are not the same, they say. And as you go in here, they say you're comparing apples and oranges. If you try to compare the CEH to the pen test plus exam, they're saying it is not the same thing. Ethical hacking and penetration testing, not the same thing. Okay. Maybe now, as I did some research for this very little episode of ours, every other thing that wasn't EC council drew a very thin line between ethical hacking and penetration testing. If a line was drawn at all. Right. So look, let's, I'll show you what I mean. Let me go to one of the places. Just Google, right? Ethical hacking versus penetration testing. Oh, look, it's EC council top, top hit. Right. And then I went to this one. I really liked this one tutorial sport. I thought this one kind of penetration to, or no, not this one. What was it? The, even though it says the same thing, it was this one, uh, it governance.eu. It does say that the term ethical hacking and penetration testing are often used interchangeably when referring to the process of probing an organization's systems, but they're actually slightly different. Knowing where they deviate is essential as they're each a core component of cybersecurity. You don't want to call for an ethical hacker when you want a penetration tester or vice versa because you'll end up with a service that doesn't meet your requirement. Well, I'm so glad that somebody actually finally told me that ethical hacking and penetration testing are different things. So let's see, what is their definition of ethical hacking? I'm kind of bring this in for you as much as I can. The goal of ethical hacking is to find security vulnerabilities in an organization's systems, right? And then it goes, goes on to talk about what ethical means and suggests. Let's jump down to penetration testing. Penetration testing is a specific type of ethical hacking in which an organization hires a certified professional to assess the strength of its cybersecurity defenses. Okay, 
right? So like I said, kind of drawing a, a really thin line. This kind of goes on to suggest about uh, the difference in ethical hacking is to say that these are often hired before new systems or major updates go live. They test systems looking for weaknesses, right? Keeping notes of their findings. Uh, then go on to talk about bug bounties, using ethical hackers for bug bounty programs and um, responsible disclosure programs and things of that nature. Um, let's see here. Do a difference between white hats, black hats, and gray hats, which isn't really what we're looking for right now. But then it guys kind of goes into that a penetration test is a more focused form of ethical hacking. Okay, I, I can make that distinction with you. And what does that mean when it comes to what we're talking about today? Um, to me, what that means is if I want to be a penetration tester, if that's what I want to do, then CEH is not the cert for me. I, I want to go to the pen test plus route or something else. Uh, another viable option, let me just go ahead and throw this hat in the ring here, is going to be EJPT from eLearn Security. Cure, curity. Bam. Let's get the screen up here. And we go to eLearn Security, EJPT certification. I'll close this. I don't need that article anymore. This is another great one and one that um, people talk about a lot. Alex, yes, cookies. Everybody with the cookie exception. Do you accept our cookies? Apparently, it's cookie acceptance day. I will accept all the cookies because I'm that kind of guy. I love cookies. They're delicious. Uh, Elon Security Junior Penetration Tester, <coughs> excuse me, is a 100% practical certification on penetration testing and information security essentials. By passing the exam, a security professional proves to employers they are ready for a rewarding new career. So, I would assume this is very penetration testing focused because they want you to do penetration testing. I have taken this course. I have passed this exam. I have taken the others as well and passed those as well. And I will say that for my money, out of these three, if we're just comparing these three, which is what we're doing today, I would say EJPT. And if you can throw pen test plus on top of it right so my order of operation is going to be ejpt in the gold with the gold medal um it's going to be pen test plus for the silver and ceh for the for the um, bronze now i don't want to ruffle any feathers out there i know a lot of people are like ceh is you know great you know here's the thing as i taught through ceh and pen test plus and I think about my experience with uh, EJPT is that CEH is massive. If you be honest, throw, throw the cards on the table. If you actually learn everything in that course, like it's, it's a part of you. It is you, you know, these things like the back of your hand, you will be a force to be reckoned with when it comes to like infosec right just being a, in, in cyber security if you know all that stuff you know all those tools and all those techniques and everything and you're able to work with those man you'll you be you be a beast right but it is a lot of money it's a an exam four hours long with it's really you know I, I, I didn't enjoy my exam experience when I took my CEH. It was like, <laughs> ah, man, I, eh, eh, a lot of that going on as I was <laughs> reading through the exam questions. I did not have that experience so much as I went through my Pentest Plus exam. It was more like, yeah, oh, oh, oh okay. Oh. And then a couple of, eh, 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 eh. EJPT, I was like, oh, yeah. yeah. It was, it was, mm. I got done, smile on my face. I was like, that was fun. It was super fun. I enjoyed that. You know, Pentest Plus, I was like, oh, that's, that's a pretty good exam. That's, that's kind of how I came out. When I got out of CEH, I felt like I got beat up. <laughs> that's kind of how it went. That's my personal experience. That might not be yours. It might not be your experience. Uh, I'm just kind of giving you my, my take on these things. So let's get back in the computer screen. I kind of jump back over. 
to the CEH, how they're not the same. And they go into saying this article, the comparison of CEH to Pensus Plus is misleading. In a nutshell, you will not you would not compare a cake to flour. It makes no sense to compare an entire dish to a single ingredient. So they're saying that CEH is the entire dish and pen testing is just an ingredient. Right? Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll let the I'll let you have that. Ethical hacking on its own is not pen testing. We did see that there is a bit of a line, but I would say if you're out there and you were thinking about taking CEH versus Pentest Plus versus EJPT, just from my experience, yet again, I haven't taken like, you know, a statistical analysis of what people are looking for, but almost to the person, they want to be pen testers. They want to be red teamers, right? And in their mind, ethical hacking and pen testing were the same thing. So now they just got to figure out which exam do I need to take? Okay. So I'm glad that if you fumble through their website, you'll find this and they say, Hey, we're not a pen testing certification. I'm thank you for letting me know. I kind of had to go through and find this. I, I didn't know that they were making that as a distinction. As I went through the course, it sure seemed like we were pen testing things. Now they did add things like, Hey, how can, what are some of the remediations? There's all, there was always a remediation section in CEH. So if you were looking at injection attacks, okay, what remediations can we perform when it comes to injection attacks? And I don't, I don't see that in pen test plus. Not that I can remember. I, I did not take their official courseware. Um, so maybe that's some of that's in there. I did have the official courseware for CEH. Um, but there you go. But they, 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 CEH does seem to have a bit more focus toward some remediation side of things. At least it's just one from what I've seen. There was nothing in the uh, ob- exam objectives in Pentest Plus that lended itself, at least not that I can remember off the top of my head, that was about, hey, let's talk of remediation strategies, security controls that we can used to try to stop these things. So keep that in mind when you're making your decision. Do I want CEH or do I want Pentest Plus? Or am I looking to really show those hands-on skills and go the EJPT course? Because let me tell you what, if you're looking to sit down and your exam be use any tool you want to use, use any code you want to use, grab Google if you need Google. If you got a book, grab a book, go for it. There is, you can do that in this exam. And truly prove it is a practical exam. You're not doing any of the scoping, right? You're not doing statements of work and and uh, you know that kind of stuff or service level agreements or MOUs, and you're not generating a report at the end and, and doing any and doing any of the post uh, engagement activities. But if you want to get your hands on a keyboard and mouse and prove I can do a cro- I can find and exploit cross-site scripting. I can find and exploit SQL injection. I can find and exploit weak credential use and network services. EJPT is the way to fly. It's just, it, it, it will give you that experience. Uh, and that's why I really like this exam. And I think it should hold a lot of weight. To me, an EJPT and Pentest Plus is a dynamic duo because then you've got all those things wrapped into one, you know, one package. Yeah, you know, of course, there's other certifications. We can start talking about OSCP. Uh, definitely PNPT, uh, the Practical Network Penetration Tester from TCM Security. Mm, I've talked about it before. I'll probably do another video about that soon. I did uh, grab a freebie from them. They had a promotion. They always got promotions running. If you're not familiar, just go to tcm-security.com. Is it? I think it's .com. Could be .org. It's probably .com. Yeah, it's not .com. What is going on here? That's not where I want to go. So I will Google TCM. TCM-security. I don't want you to go to .com. Ah, okay, I'll go to Google. Stupid autofill. Thank you. TCM security. Can't spell it anyway. It's TCMsec.com. That's what the problem was. There we go. Booyah. This and then certification, booyah, hit that, learn to hack, then prove it, no doubt, right? Again, 
I got a whole, it was called Certified Practical Penetration Tester or something like CPC. You'll see. New certification hack. I'll, I'll link to it. Is it this side? I think it's, I, I think it's, this. it's one of these sides. Look up the card. It's up the buff. Check that out. Uh, this will take you from soup to nuts as far as everything when it comes to running a penetration test. So check those out. That's at certifications.tcm-sec.com, not security. There we go. But other than that, eLearn Security has a great, this is a great intro to ethical, I guess I can't say ethical, to penetration testing. If you want to be a penetration tester, this is a great cert. I like the cert. I have actually done stuff before about this as well. So if you look up, you know, my little uh, assessment on this, I really liked this certification. Uh, let's see here. Well, let's say I want to actually get that. Where is there pricing on here? There's the exam, the process, add a voucher to cart. I thought they told us the, name, the, the price of the voucher. Oh yeah, here we go. Oh, these are other certifications. Let's go back to their products. Let's just go to certifications and see if they show the pricing. Cause they got a lot of, of certifications here. EJPT, ECPPT. Oh man, they got so many good certifications here. I probably passed it. There it is, EJPT. Does it just take me back here? Probably does. Let's go add voucher to cart. Just see what that does. Go to my cart. Oh, there we go. Yeah, 200 bucks. $200 for a actual hands-on practical certification. Well, how about them apples? That is not only reasonable, but very reasonable in this guy's estimation. Estimation. Well, there you go. Uh, does it have, let's go back to, uh, take that out of my cart first. <laughs> I accidentally buy it. I don't, I don't need to buy it again. I already got this thing. Um, go to certifications, EJPT. And just kind of look at, we, we, it wouldn't be fair to kind of go over the Look at these do, knowledge domains, TCP IP, IP routing, LAN protocols and devices, HTTP and web technologies, essential pen testing processes and methodologies, basic vulnerability assessments of networks, basic vulnerability assessments of web apps, exploitation with Metasploit, simple web app, manual exploitation, basic information gathering and reconnaissance, simple scanning and profiling, this really does kind of give you the basics of what you need to be successful at becoming a penetration tester as a job. It, it really does have a great, um, it is a great program for that. Uh, some, I like this prerequisites. They kind of move you toward, hey, there's some things you might need to be familiar with before you get into this. Otherwise, this could be a bit of a slog. Uh, deep understanding of networking concepts. You should already be at this level if you're if you're thinking about moving into security as being a security professional. You should already know systems and networking pretty well. Uh, simple manual web application stuff. So you know a bit about web, basic vulnerability assessments. But these are the skills that will help you pass. Then the exam, it is like I think it was seventy two hours, three days. They give you three days. Let me tell you what that is plenty of time. I would say for a lot of people, maybe some people, they need all 72 hours. I really think that what they're trying to do is give you enough time to be successful. So if you, if you need to take some time, take a nap, go to sleep, wake up the next day, continue your exam, right? 72 hours, man. Come on. You got plenty of time to get in there and get this thing done. Uh, yeah, there you go. Take your exam. Super. It was such a good experience. So there you go. We've we've taken a look at three of these things. Hopefully I've given you some information that can help you as far as at least price, the stuff they cover, the ex my at least my exam experience and what I thought about it. Hopefully that's all helpful to you good folks out there in making your decision on what you think. My personal preference out of those three is going to be EJPT all day long. It's just that simple. For me, that's what I think certification exam should be when it comes to penetration testing. I'd like to see them add a little bit when it comes to scoping, just a little paperwork or something, throw that on top of there. 
I know they kind of hold that off, I think, until you get into their other certifications. That's cool, right? Again, this is intro. Pentest Plus, if you throw those two things together, could be a great duo. If you're looking for a massive tome of information and just general understanding of X, Y, and Z, when I do the training, I can't help myself. So if you're watching me, you know, and uh, you're watching training that I've done, I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm going to take you, like, not only is this what you need to know about it, but here's how to do it. Just because why not? We're right here. Let's do the thing. So I, I will show you how to do it. Um, but, hey, that's not everybody. I do that with Pentest Plus as well. Um, if I, I mean, ever did do some sort of EJPT grayware, it, we would do that there as well because that's how I roll. Uh, and that would serve you well because you're going to actually be doing those things in that exam. So uh, that would be what's up. So there you go. Now you can pick your 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 certification of choice. Hopefully, again, like I said, that helps you figure out what that is and make that right decision for you. Um, the other things that come into play, like recognition out there in job hunting. CEH has been around a while, so it's got a lot of recognition, but I am seeing a lot more of CEH or comparable. It's not just CEH or OSCP or comparable certification exam. Some other certifi or, uh, security certification that you have. There, The doors are widening when it comes to HR, at least from what I'm seeing out there in the job market where it's starting to go, well, there's a bunch of cert security certs out there that are geared toward these things. Maybe we need to stop being so hard-nosed about specifically if you don't have CEH on your resume or if you don't have Pentest Plus on your resume, if you don't have OSCP on your resume, just boom, the book is closed, right? So I like seeing that because there's a lot of competition out there and competition is good for you and me because that means we're going to get good prices. We're going to get good exams. They're covering the things that organizations out there want. If you're not cutting the mustard as an exam, word of mouth is going to travel fast. Right, people are going to be like, "Don't get that exam; it's garbage." Right? Uh, right? I'm, I'm sure you've heard those conversations before. I'm not naming names because I don't want to be a total not cool person, but I'm sure you've heard that conversation before. And maybe we've seen a little bit today of why those conversations might have been had. Because, anyway, I digress. I'll leave you to it. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for joining me. I'm hoping to have more content more regularly for you good folks out there. Maybe do some hacking news even. Maybe once a week we'll do a hacking news like, who got hacked today kind of thing. That does sound like fun. Hmm. Idea. Write that down, Daniel. All right, it's written. Thank you for watching. And until next time, keep hacking.